The following podcast is sponsored by Luminary Leaders, Sadat and Associates, and Connected Women of Influence. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to the podcast. My name is Shelley Harrison, and you are listening to Speaker Central. On this episode, we talk about the world of speaking with my special guest, Lisa Reed. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Speaker Central, powered by Luminary Leaders, a speaker management and consulting company specializing in representing professional speakers and authors across the country. I'm your host, Shelley Harrison. Each episode, we bring you thought leaders, experts, collaborative partners, and our Luminary Leader speakers to get into their mindset of business. We break down the conversations to give our audience actionable steps to use in their business immediately. That will bring transformation and change. Catch our episodes on your favorite podcast apps, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. We would love for you to subscribe to Speaker Central to all the new episodes that are coming out with phenomenal guests, just like the one we have on our show today. So I want to welcome my guest and close friend, Lisa Reed. Lisa, welcome to Speaker Central. Thank you for having me, Shelley. So excited to be here with you. I'm very excited to have you here too, because we're going to talk about a topic today that I think both of us could spend a lot of time talking about. Would you agree? Yes, indeed. Yes. <laughs> and the fact that we've known each other for so many years, we've been a lot of, at, you know, a lot of the same events that we've attended together and, and that we've done together, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> so Lisa is, I want to give you a little background on Lisa. So she is a virtual speaker. She's a trainer and speaker coach and founder of Get Speaking Gigs Now. Lisa is also the founder of OC Speakers Network, which I've attended multiple times. And we'll get to know a little bit more about that that group when when we get into the interview. Um, Our conversation today is the world of speaking. So just think about that, the world and, and you'll see why we're using that, that term today. Um, so Lisa, should we get into this? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So I want to start, start out the interview with asking you something that I ask all of my guests. And, you know, since I want you to think back, which isn't too long ago, but at the beginning of the year and answer this question, I'm blown away at how my speaking business has, and then fill in the blank really touched people's lives. I get inspired mm-hmm. by, yeah, like I am getting inspired by, especially one, one client particularly comes to mind. She has taken the ball and run with it and is having massive results and massive confidence. And it's a game changer. And what really chilly, why, what the reason behind why I do what I do is because I know that people can make a bigger impact than they are currently. And when you speak, you reach more people and that ripple effect goes further and further. And so to me, that's the cat's meow right there. That's it. Yeah, no. And, and I would agree with you because both you and I, I mean, we both are able to work with speakers on top of that. You are a speaker. So, and I'm not, I mean, I, I (laughs) represent speakers. I I'm a podcast host for a couple of different shows, but I know when you really get into the minds of speakers, um, they're doing it because they have a story. They're doing it because they're, you know, they have a traumatic experience or an overwhelming experience that they want to share on stage. Um, so it's kind of exciting, you know, just to see the, the progress that people can make once they realize, oh, I want to be a speaker or I can be a speaker, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Lisa, tell us about your speaking business pre COVID. Mm-hmm. And then I want to turn it around and say after or during COVID, how your business has changed. It hasn't changed a whole heck of a lot, actually. So certainly here's the things that have changed. And this is the pre COVID how it was. Yeah. A lot of my, part of my training would include uh, making sure that any client I had knew how to use a projector or how to hook up a projector or how to (laughs) technology troubleshoot, whatever you needed to do as a speaker. Yeah. That was 
probably the one aspect of how I coach and what I coach that is not that I would spend a lot of time on that, but I would just make sure people were set with their technology and that they had everything like I have checklists of like all the things that you're supposed to bring with you when you're going to an event, right? Yeah. And so that's kind of the, ironically, it's really like a, the easiest part of being a speaker is bringing the stuff. Like that's the easy part, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you forget, you know it's the easy part. But of course, if you forget your, like say registration pages or your credit card swiper or whatever, that could yeah. be detrimental. So easy, but important. <laughs> <laughs> And I also would go to a lot of live events, whether I was speaking or attending or hosting, I would host my own live events as well. Yeah. And so, so that's the biggest change, but in terms of how I supported my clients, I I've been coaching on zoom for years. So that yeah. part did not change. Hmm. Then when we went into, let's see, it was March, April, 2020, I, like many other speakers, had quite a few bookings on the calendar for live yeah. events. And so what I did, and this is what I would coach anyone that I talk to, is you get on the phone and you figure out what how you can make it happen virtually. Good for you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know what? Kudos, kudos, kudos. Because there are speakers that said, oh, you know, I lost $100,000 on speaking events that were canceled instantly. Well, and again, getting on the phone could make a huge difference. Huge right? difference. Every yeah. single one, except for one, every single mm. one uh, was switched to virtual. And the first one I did on my Zoom account, I said, listen, oh. you know, this was like April, 2020, not everybody yeah. was Zoom yet. You know, not everyone was really up to speed. You're right. Like there now. People were, were kind of, I think a lot of people were a little scared. They yeah, were scared to get on different. Zoom. It was different. And so yeah. I just said, I'm happy to host. I will, which is you know, what I wouldn't usually recommend as a speaker because then now you're double duty on, on certain things, but right. it's better than not doing it at all. I yes. said, I will happy to host yeah. that. So I did that. And then now if, when I look back on 2020, I have, I delivered over 50 virtual speaking gigs. Wow. That so, is amazing. So, <laughs> so 50. So were you doing like maybe one month you had several the next month, maybe not as much, or was it just kind of even across the board? You know, pretty even I'll have to check. It wasn't, I never felt like I had a, a huge surge or a, or a low time. It was yeah. pretty consistent and that sprinkled in with love, you know, podcasts and radio show um, things as well. So yeah. what I say to speakers is if your chances of getting a speaking engagement had like exponentially grown, right? Because now you're not limited by having to go somewhere uh, on a plane, <laughs> a train, an automobile, That's right? right. Like, <laughs> click a button and I could be in Texas in the morning and Memphis, yep. Tennessee in the afternoon. And that's yeah. a very doable, realistic opportunity. Oh, absolutely. And I know like with, with us, you know, because we have different, you know, different um, business models and like a lot of our speakers, you know, when they would uh, be like, for example, prior, you know, and I'll use Ursula Menchez. We both know Ursula. She's yeah. phenomenal. And before I couldn't get her to speak at some of the events out here in California because she's in Minnesota. So I had to kind of coordinate when, you know, when her schedule was. So now, you know, it's like, okay, Ursula, we've got a few bookings for you because now, you know, she could, um, I mean, she'll, you know, do her thing, but then we'll have her speaking here in California where it's virtual, which is, you know, a lot of speakers I think are, are realizing the potential of, you know, of really working in, you know, a virtual world. That's so true. And I yeah. would say leverage your, wherever you are, you were in California, but if you want to visit a certain state or create connections in a certain state, or maybe already have a connection in a certain state, utilize that. And you can, you can say whether you're using luminary leaders or you're booking yourself um, through learning through what I teach is, no. is you can say, Hey, take advantage now because virtually you can get me like I'll, I'll be in, you know, Wisconsin or right. <laughs> Wyoming or whatever. Yeah. Whereas if we were in person, it would be, you know, maybe not as easy to get me booked. 
Exactly. And, you know, thinking ahead, like, you know, once this pandemic is done, you know, things are going to change for speakers for both of our companies. And I look at it this way. Now, if let's say two, three years from now, once, you know, hopefully this pandemic is is done and gone, um, now you can create the case for a, a you know, a conference that's in New York, where normally they'd want local speakers and not have to, you know, spend that extra uh, budget for, you know, getting a speaker from across, you know, from California to New York. So now you can create that case, hey, I'll come in and and do it virtually, you know, I can be, you know, where they can even have it pre recorded or something like that, for, you know, for your segment. I think another thing when in terms of virtual versus in person, I know for me, even though I had done hundreds of speaking engagements prior to going virtual, yeah. it was a change. There was a shift in terms of how was I going to give my offer? How do you increase engagement? How do you create yeah. safety in the room on a virtual event and managing the technology as well? It is different, but there's it a is. lot of pros and cons for either one, you know, because I right. hear, you hear speakers say, oh, I really miss being in person. I hear that a lot. Yeah. And us too. We all do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> but, but you know, it's out of our control right now. Yeah. 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 But no, you're right. And I think, you know, speakers that, that are, you know, really embracing this, not only can they speak anywhere in the world, but they can also work on their craft because now they're not spending all that extra time traveling, you know, doing, you know, the, all the things that we were doing prior to COVID, now I can see that a lot more speakers, you know, they have more topics that they've created, or maybe they've started, you know, a membership or they've, I mean, they're really getting creative on what they're, you know, what they're able to offer because we've had so much creative time. Have, have you I, been able to capitalize on that too? Oh my gosh, so much. And I, no. because a lot of my speaking was local, but it was still driving and we're in Southern mm-hmm. California. And then, so then you got to account for traffic and any, you know, excellent expert speaker is going to get to the event early. You want to be all set up before everybody gets there. So you <laughs> can greet people. You're not digging through your bag, trying to set the run around like a crazy person. It sounds like, draining, doesn't it? Like, oh my gosh, we used to go through that. You know, we will again, I'm sure. Yeah, Shelly, you and I have been in lots of, <laughs> lots of, lots of places really early, right? Oh, I know. I know. And it's, so yeah. now, and then even if you're driving back, so say when I would do an event in San Diego or Inland Empire or, you know, LA, you know, there's the drive time, the hour yeah. to two hours, depending on traffic. Depending on traffic. <laughs> and when you're driving, you, I mean, you can't be emailing and you can't be on Facebook and you know what I mean? Like you've got to be focused on the road. So at Mm. best, maybe I could make a phone call, but now that I'm not driving anywhere, oh my goodness, my, you are so right. And one of the things that I did as I realized this, like, so I'm starting to sink in about April. Right. And I thought, yeah, holy smokes, I have a bunch of free time now. How cool. (laughs) And I, like you created a show, Uh, I call it my COVID baby. I'm like, (laughs) I, I have my YouTube, you know, talk show now. Yeah, you do. And it's, just like you were able to go, okay, now I can actually create this, create this new channel. It's really yeah. Cool. It, and it opens up a lot more opportunities, you know, not, not so much, you know, the monetization of it, but it, it's more about making more connections, making more authentic connections, you know, whether it's event planners or, I mean, I've even, you know, clubhouse and I'm sure you've heard of clubhouse, right? Oh, yeah. So I'm in the process of creating an event planner clubhouse meeting. So yeah, because I figured, you know what, we already talked to a lot of event planners, but now this platform, you know, it, it could be used in so many different ways, even for you, you know, get speaking gigs now. And, and I'd love to kind of talk about, um, get speaking gigs now. And, and what was the mindset you had when you created it and how long has it been around? Um, I started it in 2017 and this, at this time I had booked and delivered probably about 300 talks already. And the reason that it came about was because I was already networking with lots of speakers through OC Speakers Network. Right, yeah. And I was, you know, a speaker as well. And all the time, 
Shelly, people would ask me, how did you get that gig? How are you getting all these gigs? What are you doing? Because in my first year, I booked over 80 gigs and I didn't know what I was doing. Okay. I call it ignorance. <laughs> you didn't know what you were doing, but you got 80 gigs. <laughs> how do you do that? <laughs> I realized, I, again, I, at, at the time, didn't think that was anything special, but yeah. as people kept asking me, I thought, hmm, let me, let me catalog that. What am yeah. I doing? What are the little intricate things or the big things or what are all the strategies I'm using to, to get those types of results? Yeah. And that also helped me create the name of the company pretty easily because it wasn't so much about, and I, I do help people get their talk, what I call get your talk ready to rock. I do help yeah. them with that, but that's not the main focus of what I do. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning because we want to make sure you've got a talk so that you can, you know, have a, have a product on the shelf. Like if you're going to represent a speaker, of course, the first thing you're going to say is, well, what is your talk? And can I, <laughs> you're going to flush that through the system and think, right. Does anyone want to are, are they bookable? <laughs> are they bookable is what we go through. Yeah. So, so you have to have a, you know, bookable talk that's monetizable, all those things. Yeah. But really then it's about it. Not everyone's ready for representation yet. So there's this little yeah. gap in the, in the industry where there's like a, how do I get started I'm not ready for representation. I got to get mm -hmm. some, maybe like the first hundred talks or whatever that, not like this magic number, but you, know, you got to get some experience. You got to get out That's there, right. right? And then you go, mm -hmm. oh, wow, now I'm starting to build up my business. Oh, wow, now, hey, I need help. I need, <laughs> and that's where you, <laughs> you get some representation like luminary leaders. So yeah. really it's solving a problem that all speakers have. All speakers yeah. want to speak and that's the bottom line. Yeah, I, I just, I resonate with so much of what you said, because, you know, it's a lot of speakers, they, you know, like you said, they, some of them, they don't know how to get started or they, you know, they're, they're not sure how to approach event planners and, and, or let alone how to find them, you know, and, and I think they need someone like you to help, you know, just with that getting started, getting, you know, those technical things taken care of, but in the same token, you know, rocking their talk and getting that signature speech ready or, or that, that unique talk that they have the signature talk. Yeah. And I think oh, yeah. a lot of it too, with the coaching is the confidence. Like I had a client the other day, tell me she had a question about something and I, you know, I gave her my, my response and she's like, okay, I just wanted to make sure that I got an expert's opinion on this because I was, oh. I was worried and I, now I can move forward. So sometimes it's just that little block that, that gets in our way that we start doubting ourselves. And maybe we ask our best friend or our mom or our spouse and they don't know they're not yeah. out there speaking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're just going to tell you, you know, you're great. You're wonderful. <laughs> and not that I would never tell my client that they're wonderful or great, but you need to know the truth of like, is that's this right. A good idea? You yes to know the no. truth. And then how awesome that your client came to you and saw you as an expert. And, and that's important because of all the, you know, the experiences that you've had working with speakers and being a speaker, I mean, you've got it firsthand, you know, where you can give them the nitty gritty, you can give them, you know, that, that, you know, critical detail that they need to know, because even being a virtual speaker, it's not that easy. You know, you have to be able to embrace the audience. So you have to keep them engaged. I mean, I know, and I'll, I'll kind of go back to one of the OC speaker network events that you had. And I thought, oh man, I was taking copious notes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it was a, it was a really simple, simple question, but it was about, you know, what are the things that you've learned on, on zoom? You know, what are the cool little, you know, trick tricks and things that, that you've learned, you know, that you've learned or discovered on zoom. And I thought, wow, that that's, I mean, it's so such a simple question, but you know what? It was a great, um, response that you had from a lot of different people. And I, I took away some things that I thought, oh, this is great because I help my speakers, you know, with virtual events. So it, I mean, it was a win-win just to be at that meeting just for that little piece, but I was yeah. there and I got so much more greatness, you know? Yeah. We can always be learning. And I yeah. think there's so much, I, one thing, one of the reasons I have the OC Speakers Network is because most speakers, it's ironic. We, for the most part, this doesn't apply to everybody, but for the most part, we really love to speak in front of a big group of people. Like, or, you know, yeah. we love to teach. We just, we just love that interaction. And the irony is that 
developing our content, figuring it all out behind the scenes is typically a solitary process. Yeah. And so having that group like OC Speakers Network or being in a mastermind or an academy with other speakers helps yeah. you go, okay, I'm not alone here. And I can yeah. get valuable support. I can share ideas. It's not just, it's not just give or just receive. It's give and take. It's great. Yeah. Very powerful. It yeah, it definitely can be. Um what is the greatest experience that you've had as a speaker? And what is the worst experience that you've had as a speaker? Oh my gosh, that's a really good question. <laughs> the greatest experience. Well, I don't, I mean, I've had a lot of great experiences. So I don't know if this is the greatest one, but this is the one that comes to mind. <laughs> and it's something I share a lot because I, I'm constantly telling my clients, don't judge a book by its cover. You never know what is going to occur. And I had gotten booked to speak to a small group of people. They were uh, business leaders in a direct sales company. So I knew it was a small group, but this is like the tippy top of the people, right? And it was in, so I got the address and as I'm going, I'm like, hmm, this is interesting. It was in a mobile home park. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's new. I've never done that before, but there you go. Yeah. I go. It was literally a double wide trailer, Shelly. Okay. Oh my and, <laughs> and they were nice as can be. These were successful women. And I don't know, not a hundred percent of the people signed up, but like 70% of the people signed up, yeah. paid in full. And one of those women I remember looking back now has spent over $50,000 and so Gosh. never judge. <laughs> never. never judge. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It was funny. Yeah. The same week I was speaking at a really fancy um, private club in Newport Beach. Yeah. And I thought, oh, there's going to be somebody at table. And I'm not going to go into all the details. But I thought, for sure, I'll, they'll be running to the back to sign up, right? Yeah, got a couple, and I actually had um, another. There was another client there who signed up who did ultimately spend lots, uh, thousands of dollars as well. But I wow. loved the contrast of those two events because you yeah. just never know. That's true. You you really don't, and and that's why I that kind of when you go back to virtual those kind of experiences can still happen, you know, because oh, yeah. there's a chat box, there are, you know, if you have an assistant with you, so let's say if you're doing an event, you know, having an assistant is key. Someone that's going to be there to kind of, you know, watch the back end of things. Um, and then, you know, those events that, you know, that happen, there are still the same people that used to attend those events live. They're in those audiences Absolutely. too, in the virtual audiences. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes even the small groups can be, I mean, I've had events where I've spoken to 10 people and I'm able to connect with people more and, and create more interaction because they mm -hmm. feel secure. So it's not like a, I, I'm just saying this because like, don't judge like, oh, it's only 10 people. Like that yeah. could be like 10 amazing clients for you. You just yeah. don't have. So I always believe the right person is there for the right reason. Yes. And, and I agree with that. And I mean, there have been events where, you know, back when we first started, you know, where I would have event planners that would say, oh gosh, there's only going to be, you know, five to 10 people. I'm like, that's fine. You know, the, the clients, when you let the clients know, you know, they're like, I don't care if there's one person there, it's right. I'm able to, you know, really just kind of polish their craft. They're mm -hmm. able to practice their, resume, their talk. Got you know, get a yeah. picture of them. There's all different kinds of things you could do to leverage that event for. So yeah, exactly. And then, oh yeah, you would ask me about the worst event. Um, I don't know if it was the worst event, but I think if I were to to give a category of things that I don't like when <laughs> when this happens. <laughs> Yeah. It's not usually about the people at all. It's about the environment. And again, totally oh, different man. now with virtual. I was in one event where, you know, it was supposed to be in the back private room, but then it, that room wasn't available. So then we had to be in the main room and you couldn't hear. And I, Shelly, you know oh. me, I am not a quiet person. I am one of the, you know, as a child, they would say, Lisa, we can hear you. Like, <laughs> stop well, yelling. You're, kind, right? you're very kind about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, they couldn't hear me because the acoustics oh. were so bad. So I'm 
And I don't want to be yelling at an audience. That's not great. Yeah. So, so that was one. So usually it's about noise, like, um, or they're yeah. serving lunch or breakfast during right in the middle of your talk and yeah. having to figure that I've, I've got ways to overcome that. But what's nice about virtual is that that is not the case anymore. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no That's server right. interrupting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know, it, I'm having flashbacks as you're talking. I'm like, oh my gosh, have I been away that long? We both have, you know, from yes. the live experience, but yes. it, it's, it's just, it's wonderful though, that, you know, your business has continued to thrive and, you know, the OC speakers network, you're also an author. Um, there's just great things that you're doing, Lisa. And right now I would love to take a quick commercial break. I know we're almost out of time, but I want to give uh, connected women of influence a shout out. Um, they are a national women's organization and we are a director level sponsor for connected women of influence. And I'm also a new show host for women lead radio. And the uh, show is called amplify your influence. So you can catch my first episode with Sharon Lecter and she co-wrote the book, uh, rich dad, poor dad. So it's, you know, it's available on, uh, the connected women of influence website and it's, uh, found under women lead radio. But again, I, I really want to give a shout out to Michelle Burquist and her national organization. So Lisa, back to you. Um, I, you know, I just love that, you know, you and I have been able to collaborate for so many years and I want to give you a shout out for, I, I know I had reached out to you and this is probably going back four or five years ago. And I, I was so in awe of what you've done with OC speakers network. And I thought, you know, maybe you and I could collaborate on doing another, you know, uh, organization out here in the Inland Empire where I am. Mm -hmm. And I created a SoCal Speaker Connection. And because of you, you know, and I had your blessing and I, I so appreciated that because you were so, you know, so understanding. And you, I know that you were very busy in Orange County. So, <laughs> you know, so, you know, SoCal Speaker Connection is still there in, you know, it's on the back burner right now, but it's probably going to make another appearance in 2021. Uh, but thank you so much because that really gave me, you know, the, the signal that you were a very trusted um, and collaborative partner. And, and I really want to thank you and let you know how much I value our friendship. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's funny as the years go by, we, we've, we've been able to go on lots of adventures together. We, we have, <laughs> we definitely <laughs> have. Um, so how do you see 2021 um, kind of playing out for speakers this year? I think definitely more opportunities. If you haven't already gotten that message from listening to this, start to expand what's possible. Your, mm -hmm. If you had like a circle around wherever you lived or worked, notice that that can literally drop away. It can, it can go to other countries as well. So yes, if yeah. you were always wanting to speak in another country, you now have that opportunity. So I think that's a huge opportunity. I think there's also opportunities to have your own show, whether it's a podcast, a talk show, video talk show. Yeah. You also have opportunities to be on Clubhouse. There's more live streaming opportunities on many platforms now. I remember back when it, I didn't know what Facebook Live was, and that was <laughs> now everyone's I know used to it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 2021. If anything, just keep going and get clear on. What is your soul telling you to do? You know, what is yeah. your soul saying, whispering and saying, you need to get out there. And I always say, if you were waiting for a sign, this is it, baby. Like <laughs> this is a it. big red, this red signal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That... If you're, if you're, if you've been thinking about it for a long time, like, gosh, I, I always thought I'd be a speaker and I see those people up there and I dream about it, but now I'm not ready yet. Like if that's going on in your mind, you're ready. If you're listening to this, you're ready because yeah. you wouldn't have that dream if it weren't possible for you. That's, that's so true. Yeah. And I, I think that right now, but, and both of us know that there is no shortage of speakers um, or virtual events. I mean, they're, they're worldwide, you know, and, and if you really had to kind of pinpoint the best kind of client for you to work with who speaker or up and coming speaker, who, who's that ideal client and what, what do they, 
What are their characteristics? They're definitely heart-centered. Uh, I tend to attract really heart-centered people. I, oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, absolutely. You know, industry agnostic, like any industry, but usually you have a service that you want, like you're a coach or you have some kind of service that you really want to attract your clients and you mm -hmm. love educating, you love speaking, you're an expert in something um, and you want to share that. It's typically someone who, you know that there are people who could really benefit from whatever it is that you do or however you can help people because yeah. you're really passionate about making an impact. And speaking is just a super fun way to market your business, right? Like we all know we need to do marketing. Why not have fun and do it through speaking if that floats <laughs> your boat? You know, it's not for everybody, but for those of you who it's for, oh my goodness, it's so fun. I mean, I've been doing this now, you know, seven, eight, eight years now. I still love it. It's yeah. really fun. And, and you really engage an audience too, Lisa. I mean, I've seen you on, on stage multiple times. Thank you. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is fun. And usually the people I work with already tell me, you know, I'm a, I'm a good speaker. Like I'm not afraid, but I just don't know how to get started. I don't know where to, you know, what kind of talk should I do? Is it, should I go left? Should I go right? Who would I even call? Who would I go to? What would I say? And they just mm -hmm. want some strategies and some support. And that's, you know, I give strategies of a million to Sunday strategies and hmm. they fluctuate depending on the person. So but, it's customized. It's customized. Yeah. 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 There's, there's some fundamentals and that's all in the curriculum. So you can mm -hmm. get all the fundamentals and then we go, okay, so that's the fundamentals. Now, how are we going to turn that into your plan? Yes. Because we all have that question. Yeah. But what about me? <laughs> 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 That's true. And everybody, every speaker's, not everybody, but every speaker's um, plan is going to be different, you yes. know, because some of them, I mean, they're, they're, some don't even like to, in fact, I have one sweet client that left us in early COVID times and mm -hmm. just said, you know, he did not want to get out and get out in, you know, and not only that, he did not want to do virtual and yeah. he was just like, ah, that, that's just not for me. Well, fast forward, he came back to us in November and he said, Shelly, I'm ready to come back. And I, I was so yeah. happy. And you and I both know him. Yes. Um, in fact, you referred him to us, Charlie, Charlie oh, Wright. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, he's doing wonderful. And, and I'm so happy just to, you know, just to know that he has embraced the virtual environment. Yeah. Now that we're a little more used to it, you can totally do that. Oh, and yeah. so- so that's usually who I, I work with. It's people, and sometimes it's a speaker who's a little more seasoned, but maybe they mm -hmm. they're trying a different, a completely different industry. Maybe a, something that uh, I had one client who had a big life change and was a really successful speaker in her previous career, had yeah. this big life change, and then was like, okay, she was noticing that she was questioning herself, like, do people want to hear about this new thing that I'm that I've created? Yeah. Is this the same as how it was before? And so we were able to get her on the path. So she was able to implement what she already knew, but like in this whole new direction. Yeah. And she's booked um, paid speaking engagements during COVID, wow. five figure speaking engagements. Oh so gosh. yeah, that's it's, fantastic. It's a, it's a, it's a real thing. <laughs> it is. And, and people, if they know how to negotiate and they know how to navigate that conversation, they can definitely get paid to speak or, you know, they, if they look at it as though once they get on stage and if they have products and like you do, you know, you have your coaching, you have your book, you have so many different um, funnels where people can really, you know, get kind of involved and follow you, whether they're your client or they just follow you. Uh, but there, there definitely are those opportunities, but, but you have to really have that expertise and that belief in your own value to yeah. know that you're worth it. Absolutely. And I, I, we could do a whole nother podcast on monetization, I know. right? Because yes. that's one of the big myths out there is just that it's just about the speaker fee. It's so not, that's just it's one, not. one little way, one yes. way you can monetize your speaking. Yeah. So a whole nother follow of wax. Yes. And thank you for pointing that out, Lisa, because you're right. A lot of people think, nope, I just want to get paid to speak. That's it. But there's, there's so much more. There really yeah. is. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, this has been fun. And like you said, we could keep going and going and going. So we'll have to book another time where we could talk about monetizing your speaking. There you go. Great. Yeah. yeah. 
And how can people find you? Well, if you go to getspeakinggigsnow.com, that's gigs with an S, because I know you want more than one, right? You want several oh, speaking gigs. <laughs> gigs. <laughs> getspeakinggigsnow.com, you can get a couple things. Uh, there is a freebie for you. It's the five top tips to get more speaking gigs. And then also, if you're finding that you're really ready, like you're, you're ready to get this ball rolling, um, book a strategy session with me. It's a speaker strategy session. Happy to chat with you, connect with you. We're going to connect on Zoom. And that's also available on my website. You can just click the button and schedule a call with me. Oh, that's awesome, Lisa. And we'll make sure that all of your links are on the show notes. And, you know, we definitely want to push this out because I think a lot of speakers can benefit from what you shared today. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you for being on Speaker Central. And I want to thank our audience for continuing to follow us. We have new followers in Germany, Italy, France. So it's so exciting, you know, just to know that we have new followers. And keep in mind that on this show, we will always bring you just really high level content like we did today with Lisa. And, you know, just make sure that you subscribe so you get all of our new episodes. And uh, thank you so much for being here today. And we'll see you next time. Hey there, did you enjoy the episode? If you did, subscribe to Speaker Central.